The Delta is probably one of the most important parts of California that is least known by the people who live here and the people who rely on it. Uh, it's popular to say that uh, it's the, the source of drinking water for uh, 23 million or so of California's 35 million people. The drinking water component is, is a small part of the amount of water that, that is taken out of the Delta. Most of it goes to agriculture. This is the Yolo Bypass, and this is a way of keeping floodwaters from flooding this way rather than flooding in Sacramento. So they flood the water here, it comes down and flows out to the bay. You are here. Uh, and this is the largest feature of one of the two water projects that pull water out of the delta. This is the state's little reservoir. They fill it up with water and then pump the water out of that. The feds just have their pumps right online here and just pump all the time. Having this reservoir allows them to, <clears throat> allows the state to pump at night when electricity is cheap. So they, they save up water and then have very large pumps and pump it all out. The federal facilities are older and their pumps are smaller and so they pretty much have to pump all the time. But on the other side of that, they have Shasta Dam and Shasta Dam is the largest electrical generator in the state of California. So a lot of the electricity that comes out of Shasta Dam when they release water and push it through the turbines ends up coming down here to help pump that water down south. And the federal facility uh, pumps that water mostly to agriculture. The state facility is the one that provides water to Los Angeles and San Diego. California is characterized by very variable weather from year to year. Last year, very, very dry. This year, it didn't get wet, and then February came, and it's been raining ever since, and it was raining yesterday. You know, it's like, uh, this is, there is no typical water year in California. They are all different. Uh, but uh, the way the fish cope with that is a lot of them are migratory fish. So they come in, and the, the rainy season, the salmon and the adults swim up, spawn, and the young swim out either the next spring or we have various runs that move through the system as adults and as young at different times. So it's important as a migratory corridor. It is also important as a place where fish, resident fish live. And so we, we divide them into two kinds of fish that we, we are concerned about. Resident fish, the most sensitive of which is the Delta smelt, lives for one year. So if it gets hit, it shows up pretty quickly. And then migratory fish, the sturgeon, the striped bass, the salmon, um, lampreys that, uh, that live as adults down in the ocean and spawn up in the, in the fresher waters on the rivers. So that's the kind of fish that we worry about. The water projects have two major influences. They're tied into the dams. So how much water is released from the dams is partly controlled by how much water they can export. And that controls what the fish see although we have laws that require some water to be released for salmon spawning and, and protection of fish in the rivers. Um, and then the amount of water taken out changes all the flow of water in the delta and moves fish around, changes the, where they think downstream is. And this is the largest water project in the world. It takes, uh, in, in a unit, six, uh, six and a half million acre feet a year, Two little rivers here, Old and Middle River, that generally bring San Sacramento River water down here to the, to the export facilities. If you picture that as a baby salmon trying to swim down here and find the ocean, if most of the water is flowing down here, they go down there. If you are a San Joaquin salmon and you're coming out here, all the San Joaquin water is immediately exported. So the chance of getting a Sacramento San, a San Joaquin salmon out is really bad. The chances of getting a Sacramento salmon out are better, but still, it's a problem. And so we, I, I have had a job for a long time because of the problems that, that this causes. If you are a fish like Delta smelt that lives here year round, then that poses a different problem. It, we can try to you know, shut down the pumps for a month and get the salmon through. Sort of that's what we were doing this last month. But if the fish is living there year round, then your opportunities to protect them are different and more difficult. The one piece they didn't build, that they planned to build and, and didn't, 
was a canal leading from about here on the Sacramento River around the delta straight into the, the facilities. One of the problems with pumping water out of the delta is there's all this salt water here. And if you pump a lot of water out of the delta, you suck salt water into the delta, and that's not what people want to drink. So they're, they're limited by how much they can take by the fact that they have to have some water flowing to the bay. Also, you've got the delta here that's receiving lots of agricultural returns. It's receiving the, the sewage effluent from Stockton and Sacramento. The water here isn't as clean and nice as it is in the Sacramento River. So you get better water quality if you took the water earlier. So for those reasons, they, they early on planned a peripheral canal. And in 1982, uh, it was forced to be, the rest of this they just built because the government decided to build it. Um, but it was forced onto a ballot in 1982, and the, just a decision, are we going to build a peripheral canal or not? And an interesting coalition of people, agriculture didn't want to pay for it, and the environmental groups and most of Northern California saw it as a, a way to take more water out of Northern California and further degrade our, our fisheries and, and, and the uses of the water in northern parts of the state. And so this coalition of, of agriculture and Northern California and environmental interests throughout the state made that ballot initiative just completely go down in defeat so badly that it was not even spoken of. Anybody who would suggest that maybe we should build a peripheral canal had no chance of getting elected to public office or being taken seriously or anything else until the last few years. What has really changed are climate change has been recognized as affecting the state of California. We are one of the just great places to see the effects of climate change. We're getting less snow, more rain, more floods, Rather than slowly melting snow, we get a bunch of rain, and so flood risks are really higher as a result of climate change. Sea level rise pushes more salt water up into the delta. That's a problem. So, and then the risk of earthquakes has gotten a better handle on that in the last few years. So between climate change, raising the sea level, increasing floods, and the chance of a major earthquake uh, occurring and, and causing this to become a little inland sea, People are starting to say, we probably should do something before it's done for us. We can either plan and do something, or we can respond to a catastrophe like New Orleans. Um, and most people would rather not fight through the New Orleans. The progress we're making, I'm, I'm fearful that catastrophe is going to be the path that we take. From the fish side, yeah. there's, a, there's uh, some good things about a peripheral canal. Since Delta Smelt live here in the Delta, and they are affected by this year-round operation of the, of the facilities, if you move the, the facility intake up here, then you won't be taking those fish. So that's, uh, that's one of the most obvious good things. You will stop directly killing fish out of the Delta. You will stop taking all of San Joaquin River. And so San Joaquin fish have a chance to swim between the river and the bay if there's a riverine connection between the river and the bay, and a peripheral canal would help that. Some of the downsides are that Sacramento is where we get our good water from. San Joaquin gives us very little water and it's really lousy most of the time. And so there's real concern that this would all become pretty nasty water. And that's the people who live there, the people who rely on that are not very happy about that idea and trying to figure out how to resolve those conflicts is, is a big issue. The other one, is the salmon, most of the salmon that we have now, come out of the Sacramento side. And so they come down the river, and they may be affected by what's going on in the delta, but they have the clearest, easiest shot to get to the bay, or to get from the bay back home. And if we move that intake up here, suddenly all of those fish will have to swim by that intake. That will still be the largest water project in the world, and getting fish by that intake is not a simple matter. Uh, simply building something attracts predator fish. I had really a, um, a neat thing this last two years to try to keep Sacramento, San Joaquin salmon swimming down here and not getting sucked down to the, the export facilities. They built a bubble curtain and uh, 
I have my doubts about how effective it was. They're used elsewhere, but you have along the bottom of the river where you don't want the fish to go, you release a bunch of little tiny bubbles, and that alone discourages fish, but then they also had flashing strobe lights that reflected off the bubbles in the water. <laughs> and it looks like that at least changed the, where the fish went. In last year, though, it was not very useful because we saw that the fish, most of the fish when the bubble curtain was on did go away, but then immediately downstream there was this big hole with a bunch of predator fish in it. And so it didn't really matter whether the fish went this way or not, most of them died. This year, we had more water, fish could swim through more quickly, and the water was more turbid. So they weren't getting exposed to the predators, and the bubble curtain seems to have worked better. But the bubble curtain is a way to let the water go there and try to get the fish to go a different direction. So